Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and I am joined by my colleague Alex Gongay Ruzik and our special guest, Canada center back Scott Kennedy. So Scott, first and foremost, the mask. How's the face doing? Is it returning or are you retiring it? I don't know. I mean, I got a lot of uh, positive uh, yeah, talks after the games about it. Uh, maybe I should bring it back, but uh, for, for medical purposes, I don't need it. Um, face is good to go. Um, so. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Sometimes, you know, players play well with it, so they keep it on. So I just had to ask. But uh, Scott, let's look ahead for uh, Regensburg and your guys' survival fight. Now, obviously, there's some important games coming up. I'm just curious to see how the squad is feeling going into this stretch of matches. We feel good. I mean, uh, obviously, if you've, if you've played sport, you know the situation. You know it's a tough situation. Um, but, I mean, the, the positives is we still have a chance uh, we're not out of it. Um, it's still in our hand to to create the possibility uh, of staying in the league. So uh, yeah, we're just we week in week out trying to get a result, and uh, until it's over, we're not we're not going to give up. So uh, it's a second Bundesliga. It's a it's a fight every week, regardless of where you stand in the the table. Um, we know that, and we're just going to continue that way. And obviously, Scott, you've been in Germany for a while. So, you know, going back to that start of your, your career, I guess, in Germany, you moved as an 18-year-old. Um, you know, what went into that decision? You obviously have a German passport, so I imagine that helped. And, and how difficult was it to adjust, you know, as a kid from, from Calgary? It must have been maybe a bit of a culture shock, I imagine. Yeah, uh, definitely a culture shock. Um, yeah, if I think back, I mean, now I feel comfortable. But back then, it was a big change. I mean, I just came out of high school. Um I saw all my friends going to university, you know, playing at the university level. Um, and I was playing in the sixth division in Germany. Uh, it's a semi-professional league, obviously. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, what am I doing here? <laughs> Everybody's having fun back home. And, and you know, I'm just uh, playing in a league that nobody's going to notice. Um, but I had a, a good team behind me that believed in the process. Uh, and that was basically moving my way up through the leagues. Um, and so with the belief of, of my family as well and, and these few individuals, uh, I just kept kept going. Now, between your time in Austria and Germany, what was the biggest thing you've learned towards becoming a professional player, both on and off the pitch? I think the, the most important thing is the belief in yourself. Um, getting sent into different cultures, different uh, countries, um, not knowing a whole lot of people. You definitely have to believe in yourself and what you're capable of. Um, like I spoke about having a group of people around you to support you as well is, is very important um, that have the belief in you um, that maybe have experienced uh, other players gone through similar situations um, and people that know what it, what's needed or what's required to play at the highest level. Um, so definitely just a good support group and the belief in yourself. And then obviously your time at Regensburg, you've had the chance to, to have some pretty special memories in the Pokal. You've beat Cologne twice and, you know, you made a run at the quarterfinals in 2021. Uh, it's, you know, one of the most historic and just storied tournaments in the world. How special has it been to, to feel the magic of the cup from your perspective? Yeah, it was magical. I mean, uh, unfortunately, the first time we played, it was during Corona, so we didn't have the fan atmosphere. Um, but even without it, you know, you could feel it on the field, just the, the difference in in the players' energy, uh, the want to to it to the next round um and yeah for for regensburg it was amazing because we it was his history to get to the quarterfinals and uh yeah to score a goal in a big game was obviously huge um also maybe was a starting point for my career at the national team um to dig my way in there so yeah enjoy those now, Scott, you may not know this, but May 26 is a special day for both of us. It's it's my birthday, but it was also the day that you received your first Canada call-up, and you later made your Canadian men's national team debut against Suriname in a pretty crucial match. What was your confidence like going in that, considering it was pretty much your first camp? Yeah, when I think back to that camp, it's it's only positive. Uh, that was an amazing camp for the country, for, for the team, and for me especially. Um, I still remember the first time singing the national anthem, even though... There was no fans. Um, it was even maybe better because you could hear all the boys, uh, the feeling behind the words spoken. Um, yeah, it was truly an honor, and it was only positive because uh, I could only learn learn from the amazing talent we have there um, and absorb it all. Um, I was lucky enough to, to get some minutes and, and play well, 
Um, but just for the country, it was an amazing feeling. And then, you know, fast forward two years, all of a sudden you're at BMO, it's 2022, it's cold, it's snowy, you have a chance to play for a spot in the World Cup. You get the start, you go 90 minutes. Just how is it like playing through that game? How is the, you know, feeling before the game? And then, of course, final whistle, the whistle blows, you do the math, you're in the World Cup. How does that feel as well? A lot colder, a lot colder that one. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember just, I didn't have gloves on in the first half and at halftime I thought, man, I, I probably should put some on even though I'm Canadian, it's, it's pretty cold. Um, yeah, also spectacular, I mean, only positive. Uh, I mean, after the first couple goals went in, you start to think with, with the lack of players that they were able to bring in, um, the quality we have, you, you start to think that it's, it's pretty much a solid deal and you're through. Um, and so after about the 70th minute, I just tried to absorb everything, all the feelings I had, uh, the atmosphere, the sold out stadium, the, the cold wind with the snow blowing in your face um, and just enjoying all of it because you know you're, you're headed to a World Cup. So yeah, very good memories. And Scott, you unfortunately had to pick up a shoulder injury just before the World Cup that ruled you out of the tournament. Obviously, this is not good news and any news that you would have wanted. So what was it like to process that information? Because it can be tough for any athlete, especially emotionally and mentally. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a, a tough one to swallow. I mean, uh, going from a high, like in March, qualifying for the World Cup to an injury in October, it uh, you, you, you realize the ups and downs of football. Uh, and ups and downs in your career and uh, yeah thinking back now it's easy to say you know everything happens for a reason and and I can take the positives out but at the time of course it you know I I never even dreamt of dreamt of getting to a world cup uh, as a Canadian uh, you know growing up that wasn't really on the radar um, I didn't really watch soccer until 2008 to, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah just to have that opportunity was huge and uh, yeah it was tough it was tough uh, it was obviously an enjoyment to watch the boys still play and, and play so well and show well for the country um, but yeah it, it hurt and uh, now I have my next goal to be at the 2026. Well that's the nice thing that you mentioned obviously you get a chance now to play at home the next time out at a world cup you're still young, so you're not sitting there thinking like, oh, I'm going to have to drag out my career. You're going to be very much in your prime. So on the flip side, maybe watching that tournament, did that give you a bit of extra five? Like, oh, I can be there at home in 2026. Like, let's get after it. Yeah, I mean, I think that probably lit a lot of fires under a lot of young kids, especially in Canada, saying, you know, we're fighting against the best now uh, and we can compete. Um I think that lit a, a huge fire in Canada, not just for the players in the program now, but for, for many to come. Um, and yeah, just looking at my career, I, I, I totally believe I can be there in 2026. And, and uh, I feel like I can help the, the team uh, even maybe do better, hope, win a game um, like we, we had set out to do and unfortunately didn't, didn't achieve. Um, yeah, so I see a lot of growth in the, in the program. And I'm excited to be a part of it and hopefully uh, continue to get chances to be a part of it. Now, Scott, um, some might not know this, but you're actually a very speedy player for your frame. You have one of the top speeds in the second Bundesliga. How important of an asset is that to, to you to try to maximize your game? And uh, surely it's got to give you a bit of confidence in training when you go up to a player like, you know, Buchanan or Davies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, against uh, players like that, the speed uh, <laughs> doesn't look that fast anymore. But... Uh, no, it's uh, one of my best attributes for sure, and um, I use it. Uh, I, I calculate my game so that I can use it to the maximal uh, yeah, capacity. Um, yeah, I, I see a lot of different strengths and weaknesses in every player, and you need to know what yours are to attack or to use the strengths and avoid the weaknesses. So um, obviously I try to, to get in a lot of running duels and uh, exploit exploit that strength then obviously now scott big summer ahead for canada you got a chance to win not just one but two trophies so you know how excited for you for that chance to potentially lift silverware just because it's been so long 23 years for for canada and you know you, the group's obviously hungry ready to put calf on notice how excited are you for that 
Yeah, I'm buzzing. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I have a big job to do here in Regensburg. Uh, that's to, to stay in the league first, um, but of course I have that in the back of my head um, in June in Las Vegas and uh, yeah, the hype is there. I hope uh, we see lots of fans down in Las Vegas. I mean, it's a nice place to do a quick vacation. So um, yeah, and then on to the Gold Cup also, you know, we're, we're in a really good situation right now and uh, we're, we're a team to, to fight for silverware, like you said. So. <laughs> It's only positive. That's perfect, Scott. Well, I appreciate your time for the interview today. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully you guys are able to avoid the drop and best of luck as well in the summer. And hopefully you can strike some silverware and bring some success to Canada. Thank you guys.